So Kevin, are there any nutritional strategies um, to prevent muscle mass loss without interfering um, the healing process? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think there probably are. Um, there are a couple things that, that there's speculative evidence for that we, that we really need to start doing some research on, but I think there's enough support that maybe it's worth trying. First of all, I would say perhaps some extra leucine might be important. There's some evidence that leucine uh, can help ameliorate the anabolic resistance which, which occurs with the mobilization of a limb. So, that, so in other words, when you, when you eat a protein, the, the muscle doesn't respond to the protein as it would in a healthy limb. So there's some evidence that leucine can actually help ameliorate that. So it's possible that that would work. I think there still needs to be some further support to solidify that. And then the other thing I might try would be some omega-3 fatty acid supplementation to increase the omega-3 fatty acids in the diet because there's some brand new evidence coming out of a lab in St. Louis, Missouri that, that shows that, that uh, omega-3 fatty acids enhance the response of muscle protein synthesis to protein intake. And so that could be important in this situation where the, the muscle is resistant to uh, the intake of protein. But I think, again, it needs to be tested in that specific situation before we can say for sure that it's actually going to work. And is there a specific amount or a specific time you should consume the omega-3 fatty acids? Yeah, that's a tougher one. Um, the studies that were done were sort of five and six grams of the supplements per day. And of course, that's assuming that they already had a fairly low omega-3 fatty acid intake in the diet, which most people in North America and Europe do, really. And so. Uh, we, we don't know that, but sort of five, six grams would be something that I would probably try if I were talking to an injured athlete and just see, see if maybe that might help, help something. We don't know if it would work, but there's not a whole lot of evidence that it's going to hurt anything, so it's one of those risk-benefit things that you might try. As far as when to take it, if you take a lot of omega-3 fatty acid supplementation, especially because it's usually found in the fish oil supplements, mm -hmm. if you take it all at once, people tend to complain of, of a fishy taste and, and maybe even a GI issue. So I would probably tell people to spread it out throughout the day in smaller amounts. Okay. And um, a lot of athletes assume when they are injured they should lower their energy intake. Is that correct? or? You know, that's, a, that's another one that I think is really interesting because that assumption is there and probably to some extent it's valid. They're certainly not going to be training as hard but obviously their energy intake is going to be dependent on what they do do for training. For example, if they injure their leg and they're on crutches, well, they can still go to the gym and lift weights with the upper body and even the other leg. And there's arguably an ar a, a, there's a good uh, argument to do a lot of work with the other leg because there's evidence that there's actually a crossover effect. So maybe if they're training hard, then that's one reason the energy intake shouldn't go down as much. Another reason is that the injury itself, depending on the severity of the injury, actually increases metabolism. So the healing process costs energy and so energy intake actually goes up immediately, uh, energy expenditure, excuse me, tends to go up immediately after an injury. So now that's going to, depends on how severe it is, how long that's going to last, but it can be as much as a 50% increase in basal met metabolic rate when, when there's a, a bone break, for example, mm -hmm. something like that. So, so maybe that keeps the energy expenditure slightly higher than most people think. And then the last is, if they're on crutches, it actually takes two to three times the amount of energy to get around on crutches as it does walking. So again, it's going to depend on the individual and how much they actually do try to get around. For example, when I was injured, I had, a, I had an Achilles rupture. I was actually crutching all the way into my office, two, two miles. So I spent a lot of energy doing that. So the energy intake, I think, probably doesn't need to come down as much as a lot of people think. And then the final factor, I believe, is muscle protein synthesis is a very energetically expensive process. If you lower the energy too much, you can't have protein synthesis as much as you should. So perhaps that's going to accelerate the loss of muscle when your limb is immobilized. So I would argue that you're probably better off having an energy intake which maybe is a little bit too much and you might gain a little fat rather than losing more muscle because you're restricting energy too much. So I think people need to be careful about really restricting the energy intake. And the last question, um, why is leucine so important for muscle protein synthesis? Well, leucine is a, is a, is a unique amino acid in that it has, most amino acids are, are, are simply part of the, the uh, polypeptide chain that makes a protein, but leucine seems to be 
also have a signaling aspect to it. It, it actually turns on the metabolic and, and molecular pathways that result in increased protein synthesis. And so that's why leucine is, is critical in those situations. So that may be why leucine might work in this situation where the muscle is resistant to anabolic stimulation because it actually turns on those processes which are impaired by the immobilization of the limb. So you would say that our whey protein is more important due to the high leucine content than uh, casein protein? Well, we, we don't know that for sure, but I, I think there's mounting evidence and, and starting to look like you can actually get a better response of protein synthesis with whey protein than casein. Now those studies are done mostly after exercise. So in this immobilization situation, we don't know whether casein would actually be not as effective as say as say whey protein, but probably if you're going to take a supplement as part of that, maybe maybe that's the best thing to do. And what about casein and as a using as a night protein? Yeah, I keep hearing that, and I really don't understand it. Um, I'm not sure that that has a whole lot of evidence, but uh, I, I think you got to take that in context of of do you have the room in your energy budget to to have all this extra protein at night? Maybe if you do maybe it's worth it. As it, With an injured athlete, you know, again, mm -hmm. whereas I was arguing that maybe you don't need to reduce the energy that much, I still wouldn't pile on a lot of protein that also gives a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. I'd, be, I'd be sort of careful about that.